On this episode of Travelog, we'll whisk you off to Huizhou to see some of China's most well-preserved and stunningly beautiful villages. We'll get a taste of traditional village life and immerse ourselves in the historic, cultural and architectural treasures of this region. I'm James Lamb, welcome to Travelog. I'm here on the Xin'an River, and it was this very body of water where hundreds of years ago, young Huizhou businessmen, some as young as 14, would leave for faraway places in search of their fortunes. And once they've made it big, once they made lots of money, they would come all the way back here to build exquisite houses in the villages along this riverbank. And I'm told that these villages are extremely well preserved and they're here for us to explore. Let's go have a look. Huizhou is the traditional name of an area that's now mostly included in Huangshan City in East China. You can reach it quickly and easily by road, rail and air. Even from Beijing, it's only a two hour flight. The Xinan River is the best spot to start my journey because it's Huizhou's mother river. Back in the day, it was the expressway to the outside world. Young men would sail away on this river to seek their fortunes in other parts of China. Huizhou Gucheng, or the old city in Sichuan County, is an important stop on our tour. For centuries, it was Huizhou's capital. Visiting the old city is a great way to begin immersing yourself in the local life and culture. I get a real sense that the essence of daily life is very much the same as it was hundreds of years ago. Cute Huizhou babies. I'm in Huizhou Gucheng, and this used to be the ancient capital of Huizhou. This ceremonial archway, it's been here for over 500 years. Ceremonial archways symbolize honor and achievements of outstanding people. Huizhou is dotted with ceremonial archways, but you must stop and marvel at this one. It's unique because it's the only one with four sides. It was erected to honor the academic excellence of the scholar Xu Guo, and is very much the pride and joy of the old city. If you find this main street to be too busy and loud, never mind, just veer off into one of these side streets. They're really secluded and quiet. Just walking along here, you can see locals going about their daily lives really quietly, just relaxing. It's really nice. This alley I've stepped into is the famous Doshan Street. I suggest a leisurely walk through here to see how the locals live. Remember to bring your camera to take photos of the exquisite Huizhou style old residences that line the street. Many families have lived here in the same home for generations. I find it so hard to leave this place. I've had a really enjoyable time just sitting around relaxing. Centuries ago, Hui businessmen, they grew up here. While they were kids, they grew up here before they left for the bigger towns. And right now, hundreds of years later, you can find their descendants still here. It's as if nothing's really changed. One of the most striking features of Huizhou architecture is the tall, whitewashed, crenellated walls. They're often called horsehead walls due to the shape of the slim protruding part near the eave. 
Walls were built high to enhance security for the household when it was common for the men to be away on business. They also functioned effectively as firebreaks, which is especially useful when houses were made of wood and often connected to each other. Wandering along the alleys, you're likely to hear the shuffling sound from a game of mahjong coming from the residences. Follow your ears and step inside. People here don't seem to mind you popping in to watch their game. <laughs> You know, after lunch, the locals like to gather for an extremely entertaining game of mahjong. And what I find so much more fascinating is that in, they're in complete harmony with this extremely old building. This building is really ancient. For me, the combination of old people and old architecture exudes a feeling of calm and tranquility giving this place a relaxed atmosphere. Another charm of these side streets are the warm-hearted people. I actually thought this gentleman here, I thought he was a foreigner, but he's actually a Chinese guy. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, very shy, very shy. <laughs> One of the joys of travelling is the people you meet quite by accident. I was extremely lucky to encounter Mr. Gu, a local artist, who was on his way home from buying art paper and has kindly agreed to take us to visit his house. I later learned he came from a prominent family that has lived here for generations. Wow, it's surprising to think that in old China, business people did not enjoy great social status. Back then, officials and scholars were high society. Despite this, Huizhou businessmen were renowned for their reverence of learning. The graceful elegance of the residences they built and intricate details of the interiors and furnishings are evidence of sophistication and refined taste. We're still marvelling at our luck. One minute we were wandering Doushan Street, the next minute we're in Mr. Gould's world. The afternoon was an eye-opening experience. If you're into calligraphy, you'll love this place too. This is where some of China's finest inks are produced. Modu, the hometown of Huizhou Inc. I'm in the Huizhou Ink Workshop. If you're in Sixian, you have to visit this place where you can see ink made in the traditional method. Ink is essential in Chinese culture. So important that along with inkstone, paper and brush, it makes up the four treasures of study. Ink has been made here for over a millennium. Although the exact ingredients used are a closely guarded secret, I learned that Chinese medicines are added to give the ink an appealing smell. Seeing all this almost makes me want to take up calligraphy again.
I'm just going for a walk under the ceremonial archways dedicated to members of the Bao family. Back in the day, these were erected to commend individuals for their outstanding virtues. And members of the Bao family were known for their loyalty, filial obedience, chastity, and community service. What's special about these archways in Tangye village is they make up the largest collection of archways in Huizhou. Their construction was approved by the emperor, which just goes to show the high esteem in which the Bao family was held. It's pretty incredible to think that something erected hundreds of years ago to commend certain people still proudly stands today. The archways still do the job they were built for. Now, tourists can pass beneath them and learn about these virtuous people. Now, this is the only ancestral hall in China built specifically for women. This might not mean a lot to you, but in feudal times when women were looked down on, this was really groundbreaking. It would have been a great honour for any woman to be remembered here. The Bao family was clearly ahead of its time by building this hall to honour its women. One Bao woman was remembered for putting her own safety on the line to protect her mother-in-law from an attacker. Another Bao woman was remembered for her devotion to her deceased husband by remaining single for the rest of her life and continuing to care for her family. Oh, I'm just leaving my room now. I find it really hard to leave this place. I had the best view. I could see the old city by the river. It was just amazing, but the, the downside is you have to carry all your luggage yourself. It's hard work, but it's worth it. Oh. 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 Everything's ready, let's go. We're on our way to Yixian. You know, I'm a bit tired at the moment, but I have to stop myself from dozing off because I, don't, I really don't want to miss out on this sort of scenery. Beautiful mountains, streams, and quaint little villages along the way. We're travelling to Nanping village by car, but if you have time, I highly recommend hiring a bike to enhance your village hopping experience. The draw cards of Nanping are its eight well-preserved ancestral halls and over 300 Ming and Qing dynasty residential buildings. Ancestral halls are the most important building in a village. And it's where significant family matters are discussed. Centuries later, I can still feel the special aura and dignity of this place. Nanping is renowned for the ancestral halls built by the big families of the village. These ancestral halls are amongst the most beautiful buildings in Huizhou. They boast exquisitely intricate wood carvings and are sure to impress you. The quiet and mysterious alleys are a magnet for photographers and art students. You'll see budding artists from all parts of China here with brush in hand, concentrating on capturing the beauty of their surroundings on canvas. I just got lost in one of the alleys. I love wandering around here, just not knowing what's ahead. And I think they feel the same too. To get the most out of Huizhou, you should spend a couple of nights here and take time to explore the many charming villages like Luzhun, Xidi and Hongzhun.
seeing the beautiful buildings is one thing, but staying in such a building is an even more rewarding experience. The Pigs Inn in Yixian County is a quaint and cosy establishment with a sumptuous wooden interior. The peace and quiet here is priceless. Just relaxing with a book here. This is my home in Huizhou. It's actually a 200-year-old building which has been lovingly restored into a bespoke hostel. It's set out amongst lush green countryside. And if you go upstairs, you can see beautiful countryside everywhere. This place has a really homely feel to it. It's really quiet and tranquil. I'm totally relaxed. Hi, good morning. Good morning. I heard there's a wedding here. There is. That's true. There is. <laughs> so, where's the bride and the groom? Oh, okay. Hi, I'm James. Good to meet you. What's your name? Chris. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sarah, congratulations. Where, where are the both of you from? We're both from the US. The US, the US. Okay. Wow. So, how come you're here? Like, you know, this very special day, how come you chose this place? We came, we wanted to get married in the countryside. We live in Shanghai and we wanted to come someplace that had a more natural setting and, and had a little more uh, Chinese culture to it. Mm -hmm. So we came to visit over Chinese New Year and found Lily's Pigs Inn, and it was so beautiful. Interesting man too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, what, what do you like about this place? What, you know, attracts you to this? The, the architecture, the open format building, the skylight, the natural skylight. It's really peaceful and quiet yeah. too. The farms surrounding us. Mm. Have, have you done some exploring around the yeah. countryside? Yeah. yeah, we went hiking and biking. Yeah. What do you think of the food here? It's great. Really, yeah. It's fantastic. The food is wonderful. It's, it's surprising. Yeah. 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 I'm going to indulge myself by doing absolutely nothing and relaxing for the rest of the day. I want to save my energy for an early morning visit to Hongchun, which promises to be particularly breathtaking. It's really hard to describe how beautiful Hongchun is. It's on the UNESCO World Heritage List along with CD Village. So Hongchun is like something out of a fairy tale. Being here is like being inside a classical Chinese painting. Come early in the morning to see the morning mist cast a mystic feel over the entire village. I'm at the very heart of Hongchun. The most striking thing about this village is that there's simply water everywhere. Everywhere I go, there's water. That's because the water system is extremely important for fighting fire. And the layout of the water system is in the shape of an ox, a very auspicious animal. And right here is its stomach. Running along these little alleys are these tiny streams. They pass each and every individual house. Actually, this is part of the intestine of the ox. And I'm told that there's a rule in this village that before 8 a.m. this water is drinkable. And after that, people can wash their clothes, wash, wash their vegetables, 
As you can see, someone's just washing their vegetables here. The availability of water was one of the main reasons Huichun was established here. The ingenious water system built centuries ago is so useful that it's still integral to the lives of the people living here today. To get an even deeper understanding of the way the people live, we're going to snoop around a mansion built in the 1850s by a leading salt merchant. I've just entered the home of the richest man in Hongchun at the time. And what's interesting is that this doorway is in the shape of the character for Shang, the Chinese character for business. But it's missing something. It's missing the, the person radical. And when I stand here like this, I complete the character for business. And as they say in business, you need people coming and going in order for the business to prosper. If you read up on Hui Zhou's history and culture before visiting, it's really helpful in understanding what you see. A great deal of thought has gone into the design of the buildings. The wooden carvings are not only aesthetically pleasing, but tell profound stories that are a fascinating insight into the local culture. That's the ladies' room up there. In Huizhou culture, purity was the best virtue a woman could have. And for Huizhou girl, she could not be seen in public, could not be seen by any men until the day that she's married. And that's where she would spend all her time, up on that balcony. And from there, she could observe visitors to the house. And she could also take a peek at her future husband. But from here, he would not be able to see her. If you love this place and want to take reminders of it home, I highly recommend you pick up some of the freshly handmade traditional sweets. Remember to hide them in your backpack, otherwise you'll eat them all before getting home. Hey, girl, you're here. Hello, I'm here. She's just hand frying the local Chinese tea. The fragrance is just amazing. It's really fresh. It's very sweet. Do you want to try this? It's very difficult. Let me try it. Can I try it? Oh, she's going to give me a go. It's warm? Oh, it's pretty hot. Okay. Oh, it's not easy. It's dangerous work. Whoa. To tell you the truth, I'm completely hooked on the irresistible charms of Hongchun. Sipping fresh tea while taking in picturesque surroundings and listening to the melody of a clear mountain stream, there's nothing more that I could possibly ask for. I've had a wonderful last couple of days exploring the little villages around here. It was so much fun. Just wandering around the little windy alleyways and getting lost and just not knowing what's ahead. You know, this place is full of surprises. 
I feel like I've lived and breathed the history and culture of this place. What's more, I got to try some really splendid food and meet warm-hearted people. If you do get the chance to come here, come and see it for yourself. I'm James Lamb. Thank you for watching Travelogue.